guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Sunday, November 26th at 9.48 p.m. after the Celtics win over the Atlanta Hawks. It doesn't. I was just, dude, I was sitting in the press conference room, and I think it's because of Thanksgiving, right? Because it felt like Thanksgiving was the weekend, and so now it's like the early early portion of the day. It's also very weird because like usually when we're recording this, it's like 11.30 at night, and it's not even yet. Like the 6.30 start, or the 6 o'clock start, I should say, really threw me off, man. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tired as if it's 11 o'clock right now or 1130 right now. And it's a, it's a weird thing, but Celtics earned a win over the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, one, what was the final score? Is I 113, 103? Yep. That was, yeah, score. respect. Um, picked up the win against the second best offense in the NBA. Trey Young still had his 33 points. Season low. Kind of efficient, but for the second yeah, best so, offense in the NBA. Celtics will do that to you. Best Big defense P. in the league. You're one of them. Um, Without Drew Holland and Porzingis. Yeah, shorthanded win. Big game for uh, Tatum, 34 points, 9 and 4. Decent efficiency. Jalen had 21 on efficient shooting, too. Didn't shoot well from three. Um, but the big story here was rebounding. Celtics absolutely dominated the glass after getting dominated by the Magic on Friday. They had a season high 18 offensive rebounds, six of which were from Namiya Keita, who I'm sure we'll talk about plenty throughout the course of this podcast. Um, and then Al Horford Video also type. grabbed 15. Uh, it, oh, you bet your ass. <laughs> Al Horford also grabbed 15, which I wonder. Al Horford career high rebound. That's an absolute <laughs> hoss of a game from Al Horford on the glass, though. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. He was everywhere. That is the second most rebounds he's ever had in a game for the Celtics which is kind of crazy at this point. So good for him. Rebounding was the big story there. Uh, him and Keda really stepped up. Uh, Derek White stepped up as well with 11 assists. Didn't shoot particularly well, but the crazy stat with Derek White is in a game the Celtics won by 10, he was a plus 29, which is just <laughs> kind of fucking crazy. So Great game, uh, yeah. Derek White. Statistically, <laughs> loved to see a double-double. He had three steals. Five fouls, they had to take them out in the fourth quarter as they yeah, tried real hard to lose well this one. Yeah. I mean, 5-13, well, if he makes two more shots, it's a good game. Just maybe less threes. Maybe less threes. Oh, I, I don't have a problem with Derek White's threes. They were open threes. You're not going to stop taking open threes just because you missed some in a row. Tatum, um, 13 threes. Eesh. Made five. Uh, Celtics didn't shoot particularly well from three tonight, but it didn't matter because they grabbed 18 offensive rebounds. I wonder, I wish there was a stat I could look at. I wonder how many of those offensive rebounds were off of a three. It felt like a lot of them were. Um, and Joe Mazzullo talked about it after the game. He said it was an emphasis um, because if you look at the the tracking, or the tracking, look at their schedule this season, this is the most offensive rebounds they had in the game this season. However, the other most, like the, the previous most, were all in early November slash late October. So, like Celtics' most offensive rebounds game this season. I'll show you here uh, and share the tab. <clears throat> um, God damn it, stat muse. Come on. <laughs> it, it was 18 tonight, but before that, it was the 10th. Then it was October 27th, October 30th. And then you start to see a couple uh, in the middle of, of November. Yeah. But a lot of those games in between, they just weren't crashing the glass at all. And so Joe Mazzulla is talking about how they, they need to win the margins, et cetera, which is sure. you know, turnover battle, free throws, and offensive rebounding. He's like, we killed them in the, all those tonight, and we won the game because of it. And the Celtics shot 27% from three tonight, and they won because they crapped 18 offensive rebounds. So if you are taking a lot of threes, a good way to mitigate the the potential you know bad shot percentage is by crashing the glass. And they were sending two or more at every rebound. Al Horford was in there. Cato was in there. Hauser was in there, right? Like like Pritchard ha- has had a couple big offensive rebounding games this season. So in order to, to mitigate those decisions uh, for a shot profile, getting those offensive rebounds is huge. And the Celtics did a great job of that tonight. And Hawks grabbed 11 of their own. But, it, I mean, they shot 36% from three to the Celtics, 27%, and it didn't matter. The Hawks took and made more threes than the Celtics tonight, which is not something you see a lot for the Celtics, who lead the league in, in three-pointers attempted. So uh, this this was a – I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it. This was a good win to see because it proved they can win without hitting threes, which is not something you've seen since they've gone in this sort of weird cold stretch over the past couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is sure. an early season. It felt more like the early season Celtics, uh, which we were excited about. 
Yeah, so what was great about this is it felt like they kind of owed everybody a win after Friday's absolute shit show Mickey Mouse nonsense that they pulled in Orlando where they gave up a 17 to nothing run, had no response, looked absolutely cowardly in the fourth quarter, and they really embarrassed themselves. Now, in this game against Atlanta, there was a large risk of that happening again with a extreme firepower offense coming in, averaging what? 120-ish. They average a ton. Of, second best in the league. We already talked about it. Held them to a season low, and the Celtics meant business tonight. The offensive rebounds, we talked about it. Very impressive because it's an effort thing. It's like, hey, sorry, everybody. We kind of owe you for Friday. We got punked. The physicality was a problem. You wrote a whole article about how they're getting bullied physically, and they had no response yeah. for Orlando. And tonight against a team with response. Capella <laughs> and Onyeka Nkongwu, yeah, they do a great job on the offensive glass. That's a great thing. They won the rebounding battle overall, right, Jack? Significantly so. They grabbed significantly fifty-eight rebounds to the Hawks' forty-three. Oh, yeah. Fifty-eight was a career that's, or season that's high. Big boy basketball, and they scored mm-hmm. a bunch of points in the paint. I don't know what the exact number is, but I remember seeing on the broadcast at one point it was like mm-hmm. thirty to eighteen. I can tell you. Let me look right here for you quick. Now, it, it did feel like the Celtics made a big emphasis on getting back to that physicality because, I mean, we saw a lot of offensive rebounding, like solid offensive rebounding performances from the Celtics early in the mm-hmm. season. And it felt like they got away from it for whatever reason. Like, And, and I will say this as well. It, it, it's hard to keep the same habits for an entire season. Like like Joe Mazzola talked about, he goes, it's an 82-game season. It's hard mm-hmm. to keep that same killer mentality like in, in the playoffs, right? It is a finite stretch where you need to win this many games, and there's a very clear end in sight over the course of an 82 game season, right? Like, unless you're the 73 and nine Warriors, you're inevitably going to have hiccups throughout the season. This is not excusing it because you need to address it, but I think yeah, that's exactly what year. this exactly. But I think that's exactly what this game was. It was addressing the problem directly and, and with force. It was we sucked uh, with physicality against the Magic, and we couldn't get rebounds fuck it, we're going to be the best rebounding team in the planet in this game. And, and they did that. Um, points in the paint for the Celtics tonight, uh, 46 to the Hawks, 34. They were 23 like. of 40 uh, for shots in the paint, um, which is is good. They took almost as many shots in the paint as they did threes, which is good. Good news. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm nodding good my for head Celtics. for the audio listeners. <laughs> just, just sitting here with a smile on my face, thinking about all yep. those layup attempts. Um, Honestly, yeah. pretty impressive game from the Celtics. They did dick around. They had a 20-point lead. It got down to three at one point, got down to six in the fourth quarter. It's become a trend. They aren't third that quarter, great. They are the second worst offensive team in the third quarter this year. I wonder why that is. Mm. You think after a while someone would be like, hey, just get your heads out of your asses in the third quarter. <laughs> like, Just be self-aware. Be like, all right, we might not play the best this quarter. Let's make sure we keep our heads on straight and respond to any kind of surge the other team throws at us. And to their yeah. credit, they did okay. They went into the fourth quarter, I want to say up 12 or 10, after taking a 16-point lead well. into the break. So they didn't get murdered. But it's just become such an alarming trend where you like, why is this still a problem? Why, why are there particular quarters in a basketball game where teams just fall off a cliff? Is it a rotations <laughs> thing? Is it like they're they're trying to gear up for a strong fourth quarter, so they're just kind of taking the stars out and sitting them out? I don't know. It it almost feels like they start the offensive uh, what regression early, where they're they're playing super fast, they're playing you know zip zip basketball throughout the first half, and then they come out in the third and they're like, all right, you know. We're up by usually it's we're up by a decent amount. Let, let's slow down. Let, let's get into some stuff. And they, they, I mean, objectively, they just play worse when they play slow. The Celtics are better when they're making quick decisions and, and playing pass, pass basketball and getting out in transition. And it feels like they they slow down on that a little uh, to start the third. And then usually when it bites them in the ass, they bounce back and play the same basketball they did. Um, but it almost just feels like halftime is sort of a mental reset in the wrong way for whatever reason. Also, for what it's worth, just circling back quickly on the rebounding, the Hawks are the 12th best rebounding team in general this year and the fourth best offensive rebounding team in the NBA this year. So like the fact that the Celtics were able to to dominate the glass like that is is not like they understood the assignment. <clears throat> exactly. That was that was big for them. Also um, big day for the home yeah. whites. 
<clears throat> huge. Finally Neither. got to see him and maybe one of the better wins of the season in terms of grit. It's amazing what happens when you honor tradition and wear the right jerseys where you're supposed to wear them. It's really not that also, much to ask. Also backwards, Celtics are the best defensive rebounding team in the league this season. How about that? I don't find that to be the most outrageous thing. I think they've had good games on the glass. I just think that Orlando one was so glaringly bad that everyone was like yeah. rebounding bad. It doesn't mm-hmm. help that Kristaps is going to be hurt for at least a week. Yeah. By the way, Even when late, I googled though. calf strain yesterday, it was might take three days, might take six weeks. Uh, he did post an Instagram story saying good news though, so it sounds like he's all right. He sounds yeah, like good news. I'm only out a week. You know what? I'd rather him be. A, be out a week in November than a week out a week in March, as I swallow through my words. But um, let's talk about Namish Kata a little bit because I think that was a big story. A lot the of the people, people were looking at that we do. Um, seven points, ten rebounds, uh, one steal on the night, uh, three for eight shooting, not great. And he did get a lot of his six offensive rebounds off of his own misses. So you got to put a little asterisk there. But greatest still, rebounder ever. <laughs> he of got in there. Drummond. He he was hustling. He was like a, a actual tone setter for yep. the Celtics on the glass in this game, uh, which was something that needed. Tatum talked about in the game. He said he helped us win the game tonight. Like he brought the energy off the bench, and it was great. And he looked better in his minutes than Cornette did in his minutes. Uh, that's not saying he's better than Cornette because I definitely think there are things Cornette does better than Kata. Like the Kata, debate is back. Like K- Kata, not the greatest on defense. He was getting murdered in the pick and roll. Cornette, defense. not the greatest on defense. No, but positionally, Cornette is better. And I think he is overall better at pick and roll defense. Meanwhile, Kata, probably a little bit better at one on one defense. Cornette, again, in the Orlando game, struggled. So I-, I think they both have their ups and downs tonight against a team that is a good offensive rebounding team. Kata plus five on the night, Cornette minus six. Kata grabbed 10 rebounds, second on the team behind Horford's 15, six offensive. Like, I thought it was a good night for him to show off what he can do, and, and he played well in those minutes. So shout out to Kata for uh, stepping up. New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. Yeah, I was very impressed with the stretch he put together. Like you said, his intensity kind of galvanized the team. I think they really needed that after what we saw on Friday. And maybe they even could have used him down in Orlando on Friday. I know he was on assignment in Maine. Uh, One thing that kind of stuck out from this game, they made a big deal, big circle jerk for the Jordan Walsh call-up. Did not see the man. Who made a big deal? A lot of people. Mm, People are people. I I mean... The team, Uh, they literally posted a picture of Jordan Walsh saying he's coming up. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just PR. I I wasn't expecting a lot from him. I mean, I guess you could have seen him instead of Donald Banton, who we can also talk about, but I don't know. Not bad. Not bad to start. It was all right. Uh, It just, it felt weird. It felt like you could play some other guys in him uh, or in those spots instead of him, and they would have made the same impact. Like, I get the idea of Banton replacing Drew Holiday because he brings the ball handling. That said, didn't handle the ball a lot. Like it's it's not like he did that a lot during this One game. One thing so about Banton, like and I think it's been consistent throughout the whole season, is he does rebound. <laughs> he usually yeah. puts in a decent effort on the glass, and that's something they clearly needed after Friday's game. And well, you saw how much of an impact they were able to make as a team tonight. I agree. My counter and it's also to that is they lose with uh, Holiday. Yes. My counter to that is, if Banton is on the floor for his rebounding, I would argue Brissett is a better rebounder. So at that point, why? You, like that's that's my only issue. And like Mazzulla said after the game, know. he's like, I, I looked at this as an opportunity to to show these guys that they're going to work hard. They'll be able to get opportunities. So from that perspective, like I get why Banton got that chance. And in terms of not starting Hauser, I, I tweeted it out. Hauser sucked as a starter this season. He's shot like three of 17 from, from deep. And so you keep him He's in his role and reverse Derek White. <laughs> literally. And, and spoiler alert, he was 12 points four of nine from three tonight. Same Hauser is making some fucking crazy shots tonight. Did he, I don't know how much of the game you watched, yeah, but I had that. I tweeted at you the no, no. Yes. Sidestep three, dude. I get a crucial not even part of the one. game. He did that. Yeah. That was big time, but the one that impressed me more was he did one of those where he caught the ball, didn't bring it down. He yeah, he didn't even move it. Dude, That when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, this guy's For the life of me, I can't different. understand how anybody shoots like that. That is always it's crazy. Nuts. 
it's I know they're up. professionals and stuff, but like, man, that's crazy. That's how you're supposed to shoot layups. Like they say, don't bring mm-hmm. the ball down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's he's crazy. I think everybody's getting a little bit too good. <laughs> There's I too do much think, uh... to the Hauser point, though. Mm. He's filling in his role very nicely. Like he's making yeah. an impact in almost every single game he plays. And lately, it hasn't just been from shooting. He's had some off shooting nights from three, and he's still been able to contribute a little bit. I'm happy to see that he's getting yeah. comfortable because I think in the playoffs, it's going to be very important that he's able to step in, play minutes, play defense, and knock down threes because his sniper shot, whatever you want to call it, is so crucial to defenses having to be honest and not being able to yeah. throw the kitchen sink at Brown or Tatum or Porzingis or Drew Holiday or Derek White, whoever it's going to be. I mean, you got so many guys that can create on this team. Take your pick. And he's been all right off the dribble this year, too. Like, he doesn't do it often, but when he pump fakes and drives, like, he can make a play off that. And it's been it's super it's cool funny. dunks. <laughs> super cool dunks. And <laughs> play, I think it was tonight where it was him, Cornette, and Pritchard, like, running pick and rolls and passing to each other. And, like, seeing that, it was just like – all right, well, like the people who thought the Celtics bench would be terrible, probably wrong. Celtics bench, probably not as bad as people think. It is, in fact, as Sam likes to say, it was it was the white guys making the plays for a brief moment. And Those white men are dangerous. <laughs> I saw it's the meme from there. Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I think having Hauser and Pritchard and Cornette like playing at a level where you can save minutes for the stars is important, and they've done that. Uh, and I think seeing Ben be... I wasn't overly impressed. Like I said, I'd rather see Lamar or O'Shea, but uh, like Banton was good in his minutes. <clears throat> and then Kata coming in, doing what he did on the glass. Again, places he can improve, needs to be better on defense. The way I described Kata's defense, and let me know if I'm crazy here, I said he's trying to do everything at once, and because of it, he's doing nothing. <laughs> He's, he's trying to like he's trying to press up on the screen, but he's also trying to cover the corner, but he's also trying to protect the rim. And so the result is the, is, the result is Malik Beasley trying to guard. It's like, oh. yeah, he's frozen. <laughs> and so uh, he needs to get better at his positioning and his decision making. Um, but the rebounding, I mean, you, you can't deny it. He had that play where he grabbed what looked like was going to be a ball going out of bounds and threw it off a Congo's yep. leg. <clears throat> like he was just like Mish Keita was <laughs> weirdly enough probably the story of this game it was a difference uh, maker. him and al horford For sure. yeah uh, i will say not a fan of their nickname together kill it needs to die can't what do is anything. it uh, i'll type in the private chat don't want to say it <laughs> you don't want to say it <laughs> uh that, that would be the nickname people are rolling with on <laughs> i like that nickname <laughs> good nickname <laughs> uh, if you know you know but just their names <laughs> sure uh Keda and Al uh, were good in this game, but uh, what did I miss anything? Do you want to talk about anything else? I mean, I, I think Tatum struggled with the turnovers a little bit, and I, I think that's the turnovers leading into Hawks threes were what led to some of those runs where it was scary. Oh, but, yeah. I hate white yeah. guys. Uh, Bogdanovich <laughs> not missing any shots was really annoying. He was good. He was really Add good. Add him to the list. Reasons I'm a self, self-loathing self white guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm quiz how many threes did trey young take tonight i'm not looking at the screen right now oh yeah uh, i was sharing let's guess 15 16 yeah you low Good guess. <laughs> 16 is fucking crazy yeah on the broadcast gorman was like he's kind of chucking tonight and i was like wow he has 33 points like he's not playing that bad is he <clears throat> nope not efficient 12 27 he wasn't even shots. not like he was kind of efficient like he shot 12 27 that's 44 37 5 the Celtics shut down Murray completely. Um, but dude, if you'd watched Trey Young tonight, dude, he was so bad. Like he, he was so much worse than the stats say. <laughs> like it was really it's nice not to good. see Bogdanovich miss his last four <laughs> shots, though. Wow. That was 16. That's a career high threes attempted in the game for Trey Young. I didn't know that. I would have guessed it was don't a lot get more. Any ideas, buddy. <laughs> What's the most attempted by a player in a game, do you think? Now I'm just going down a small rabbit hole quick before we get back on track. I apologize. I'd say 22. <clears throat> 24. Who is it? Guess. Clay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was he had 52. <clears throat> so yeah. and, and he and he made 14 of them. So you can't really get mad at it. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Um <clears throat> wow. One, two, three, four, five, sixth on the list is Marcus Smart. Most of it in the game. Was it the record game? Yeah, when he made 11 of 22. 
But um, yeah, I mean, good game for the Celtics. I, I think they got back on track a little bit here. The offense looked a lot better. Uh, even when they were struggling, it seemed like they were able to settle down and, and, and fix things very quickly. Defense, obviously, the rebounding was fun to see. Um, it felt like they were... Joe Mazzullo talked about it at the game. He said they were like the open threes that the Hawks got were a result of them not adjusting quick enough or let me know you rephrase not adjusting to the adjustment. Like he said, in the first half, we were going over the screen uh, in the second half. We were sending, you know, away from the screen, but we didn't do that adjustment quick enough, which led to some open threes, blah, blah, blah. So it felt like they were on top of things more in this game. It was just a couple sloppy mistakes led to a couple Hawks runs, which made, which made it feel like they were slipping away. But after let me look at the game chart here, it's sloppy mistakes are sloppy mistakes. I, I know, but my point is they shouldn't happen. No, in the third quarter, like as much as a 20 point lead did whittle down to six at one point, like they never let it go within six, like throughout the entire Insurance game. Was looking so it's like, good. Yeah. But it, it felt like even though like, as quick as it went from 20 to six, it went back from six to, you know, 13. So like they, I mean, they, they were put together a 13 and nothing run less than two minutes. It was crazy. Yeah. And then they bounced back and then the Celtics said, all right, see you later. <laughs> You're done. Uh, was that in the third quarter? I want to look at one thing quick yes. and then we can wrap up because I think unless there's anything else that you, that you no. think I missed. Um, okay. When was this 13 to run? Let me find it real quick. Um, I think this was it so it was 70 to 83 and then it was something along here but i'm trying to see did joe Missoula call a timeout after the run i don't think so I, I don't know i don't remember so it was 64 to 64 to 83 and then it was 77 to 83 and then joe Missoula called a timeout and then by the end of the quarter the celtics had to lead back up to eight so Timeout good. Saying, just saying timeout probably good. Um, that said, maybe the Celtics should try not turning the ball over a million times. So, just I, again, less. just yeah, just pointing out that there's a balance. But takeaways from this game, Namish Keita good. Al Horford is 25 again. We didn't talk about Al Horford a lot because it just kind of feels like, dude, I, how long can he keep doing this? Like, how long can he keep when doing he, this? When game? needed. <laughs> yeah. Um, he didn't even shoot well. he used rebounds. Uh, yeah, I don't need five Al Horford threes if he's not making. He went them. to the post against Bogdanovich once, and I was like, and it, it yeah. was fantastic. It More was sick, it was sick. Do you see him block the shot into his kid's lap? Yeah, it was cool. Sick. Uh, shout out them. Jays played all right. Delano Banton started. Uh, that's all I got. Shout out Sam Houser played 31 minutes, anyways. Uh, anything else you want to say? Uh, no. it's not pregame, you're wrapping here. Thank you all for tuning in. Let us know what you think of the game. Um, we posted a short today. Go watch the short. I oh, we did. Short I don't know. Yeah, we did. It got three thousand views. Good short. Man. Was it? Good was short. it from just you being there? No, it was O'Shea Brissett doing a super cool dunk and warm ups. Oh, okay, it's great. Nice. It's a good dunk. Go watch the short. Comment on this video. Comment what's popping. Shout out Joey Spatulas. Uh, subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Leave us a review on Apple, please, dear God. And uh, Sam, watch your review. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching or on the YouTube page, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, say what's popping. We'll be doing a wheel spin tomorrow. So get those licks in. Maybe a lot of you will watch this one because they won. Fairweather fans, if I've ever seen them. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple, like Jack mentioned. Leave a five-star review, say something nice, follow us there for full-length pods and the game recaps like this one. Socials, at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. It's just the name of the podcast. Our pregame streams will be live there, as well as YouTube. You can follow Jack on Twitter at Jack Simone NBA. You can follow me at Samuel France NBA. It's up for us. Jack Taco, come on.